What's going on, creative family? It's Dustin Valkama, and welcome to Fix It in Post. Today, we are talking about how to remove wrinkles from a seamless backdrop in Photoshop. I'm excited for this one because I've gotten a lot of questions about it. Most recently, from Steven Skidmore, he's part of my Facebook community, Fix It in Post. He sent me this photo, dvytedit at gmail.com. After having a brief conversation in the group about how he used Gaussian Blur to try to get rid of these, and you're actually on the right track, Steven. You're on the right track. Today, I'm going to show you how to finish that process and remove these wrinkles. Let's get started, folks. It's a good one. All right, guys, so here we are in Photoshop with Steven's image, and what we're doing is looking to remove all of the backdrop wrinkles, creases, waves, folds, all of the stuff that's happening, while still maintaining the shadows here that are happening from the subjects. The first part in this process is actually setting up a clean plate to remove the subjects from the background so that once we actually go through the process of blurring, we're not really getting any of their color or value information implemented in the background because that will cause problems later. So what we'll do is on this background here, we'll just duplicate controller command J and grab our lasso tool and then we'll select right around the subjects here. And now with that selection in place, what we'll do is we'll press shift backspace, which will bring up this fill dialog box. So what we'll do here is we'll grab content aware, color adaptation is fine, blending normal, opacity 100. We don't really need to worry about preserving any transparency because we won't have that in the photo here. So we'll just click OK. Now that the content aware has done its job and filled in with what it thinks is the best result here for this backdrop, what we'll do is use the patch tool to clean up a few of these extra areas with a little bit darker of a color range here. Now at this point we've got a pretty good clean plate, our subjects and shadows have been removed. So what we can do here is right click this layer say convert to smart object. What this does is it gives us a little bit of flexibility to play around with the Gaussian blur that we'll be applying to this, just in case we wanna make changes after the fact. So with the smart object selected, we can head up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And what we'll do is we'll just take this value and we'll slide it up until we see all of the artifacts that we want to be erased out of the photo disappear. Now that we've got that handled there with the Gaussian Blur, what we'll do is we'll label this Smart Object Background, or BG. We can select our actual background layer, duplicate that again, and we'll name this Subjects. And this is what we'll use to re-implement our subjects into the background. So here, what we can do is select the Wand tool and head right into Select Subject. And what this will do is calculate the image and figure out what it thinks is the subject in the photo. And you can see here that it did a pretty good job of selecting 99% of the subjects there. And we can create a new layer mask by clicking the little box down here with the circle. And so what that will do is just create a quick mask here for our subjects. Now what I'd like to do at this point is grab a white brush with opacity at 100 and pen pressure sensitivity can be on or off. You just wanna make sure that you can follow right along the edges here with this white brush. And what we're looking to do is bring in any of these details that may have been missed by select subjects auto calculations there. So you can see that parts of the tutu here are missing. And so we can bring those right, right back in. And so this is actually the reason why we made the clean plate to begin with. Because had we not done that process, it would have blurred quite a bit of our, our subject's darker detail and not allowed us to get the color information that's more behind them rather than their bodies. So you can see at this point we've done a pretty good job of removing all of the backdrop wrinkles while maintaining the lighting information, but 
what we're missing now is the shadows that's really grounding our subjects and letting us know that they're on the floor there. And so what we'll do is we'll handle that by duplicating the subjects layer, controller command J, and then we'll select this bottom uh, version of that layer and we'll call that shadow. And now what we can do here is just delete this layer mask. We'll say delete layer mask and apply a new layer mask by holding the alt or option key and clicking the layer mask button. Now what that will do is it will apply a negative or a black filled layer mask that we can use to paint with a white brush and bring those shadows back in. So now that the shadows are painted back in, we can see that some of that detail was re-implemented into the photo. And so what we can do is use a surface blur filter to retain these edges of the shadows while destroying any of the finer wrinkle detail or wave detail that's in there. So what we'll do is with this layer selected here, we can head to filter, blur, and surface blur. And now I've already got this set here for settings that I think work quite well, but I can explain to you what this does. The radius is going to let you know how much your photo is going to be blurred or how much those details will be blurred. And the threshold here will let you know how much of those edges that you'll be protecting in your photo. So the lower the threshold, the more it's going to try to protect the edges, the higher the threshold, it's just going to destroy or blur the entire photo. And you can kind of choose the values in between there that work best for you. So at this point, we can just click OK. And you can see that we've successfully removed all of the wrinkles and the waviness that was happening in this backdrop. Now, the last key element that we're missing here is actually the re-implementation of grain that we had taken out when we started working on this image with the Gaussian blur. So the grain will do one of two things. It'll add a little bit more realism to the image, but it will also help with the color banding that you'll get once this image starts to get decompressed at a lower bit depth. An easy way to reintroduce this grain is just to simply create a new layer Press shift backspace, which is going to bring up our fill dialog. Set the contents to 50% gray and click OK. Now with this 50% gray layer, we can just go ahead and set it to an overlay blend mode, which being gray isn't going to do anything to the image visibly here. But we can go up to filter, noise, add noise. And at this point, what we're looking to do is either match the grain that was in the original photo or just insert a low enough um, value of grain that we're not really destroying the image here, but we're just giving, a, giving these light gradients a little bit more of a breakup. So what we'll do for this one here is say sit right about 2.96. I don't feel like that's too high. We'll click OK. So now what we've got here is the grain, subjects, the shadow, and the backdrop. That's it guys. That is my process on cleaning up wrinkled backdrops in Photoshop. Not every shot is perfect and sometimes you need to fix it in post. Thank you Steven for letting me borrow this photo for the tutorial. If you guys have any other questions, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, shoot me an email to dvytedit at gmail.com with your questions, problem, and a solution that you tried to make it work. I will do my best to help you guys out. Thanks so much for being here, folks. Till next time.